Well, you are, you're, you're one of the first people that, that told me that, you know, you've been racing, blah, blah, blah. You actually, it's a weird sport to actually be, be told that, oh, you know what, you have the right to win here. And that's because you, I, when you first start, you start at the back of the pack, then you get to mid-pack if you're lucky. And there's always a couple of guys that you think are in your mind are quicker. And you are the first one that basically said, you know, you've got what it takes to win. You need to... Yeah understand that so you know to take take a win yeah yeah agreed yeah i think if you're fast in pra practice or you've had a few occasions when you're in the top two or top three or yourself when you had your pole position at eastern creek a couple yeah. of years ago or last yep. year whenever it was and then if you're on pole you're the fastest guy there you deserve to win now if you've got race race craft and you can keep your focus for the half an hour or the one hour race whatever it is then you should definitely be winning the race if you're on pole yeah um if anything, it's easier to, if you're in second or third, because the pressure's off then. Um, but if you're in pole position, you've set the fastest lap, you've beat all your competitors at the most important part of the weekend before the race, then your mindset's got to be looking in the distance and trying to pull away from these guys that you've just beaten in qualifying. So how important to you is quali? Because, you know, you've got qualifying, which sets you up for wherever you're going to start. How important is it for you? I think in sprint racing, like what you yep. participate in, in the Australian pro Prototype Series, it's important. You need to qualify somewhere near the front and the first lap or so when people are on cold tyres and trying to warm their brains up to get back into the mode. That's critical then because you can make some spots up or lose spots very quickly. Uh, so in sprint racing, that might only last half an hour. If you've lo lost a spot, it's very hard to get it back again because everybody's going to be fighting hard and not wanting to give you an easy crack at it. Um, endurance racing a 24 hour qualifying becomes a lot less important then um, and the drivers that get selected are drivers that are good over the long distance that don't make mistakes you don't necessarily are chasing those one or two tenths like you are in a sprint race um, so yeah sprint racing qualifying is critical endurance racing when you've got three drivers and it's the average it's less important so if you if you could have <laughs> some advice for an up and coming driver and you know, what advice could you say that you've had over your last 36 years that you can turn around and go, you know what, I wish I knew this when I was 15? Um, I think because I do coach a few young guys and there's a guy, Daniel Frost or Harry Jones, that I've helped from a young young age and they're both becoming professional drivers as, as we speak. Um, I think it, I think the number one most important thing, like to be successful at anything in business or racing or any sport, you just can't give give up. When the when times are tough, uh, you just got to keep positive and just keep charging ahead. Give it one hundred and ten percent. Um, you're always going to have bad days and in fact you, prob you probably learn more on the tough days and the tough times than you do when things are going well. If you get it too easy, I think uh, you don't learn that strength in your character to be able to pull, pull through when things do get tough. So I don't know Daniel, but I know uh, Junior, Harry, Yep. Harry Jones and you know, I think he's 19, 18, 19 yep. and his demeanour, the way he presents himself, he's a freak when you look at it. He's extremely mature for his age, which I think anyone who's going to perform well in sport is. If you see all the guys who have, um, from young ages, that have done well, Tiger Woods or the exception, you know, exceptions yep. to the sport, yep. are always super mature for their years. And Harry is um, very, very mature. He's got a very good temperament, and I coached him for uh, two years there in Formula MRF and Formula Three. And now he's just about to become a professional driver, in my opinion. He's been racing Porsches. He's won Australian Formula 3 GT3 yeah. Cup Challenge yep. here in Australia. So, yeah, he's going places. He's definitely got what it takes. And for me, I look at someone like that <coughs> and I see the way he goes through his data, the way he handle, he knows what he wants for setup in a car. And I think that's the sort of kid that should be driving F1. Yeah, he's methodical, he's smart. He's doing his degree at uni university. Uh, Engineer, but... The reality is, even as good as he is, the chances of getting an F1 drive are extremely, extremely thin. Yeah. I saw an article in the paper in England uh, which said Lewis Hamilton probably had £20 million spent on him before he ever sat in an F1 car. So £20 million, which is, what, 38 <laughs> 30, million yep. Aussie. Um, yeah, so... It, it, and it's becoming harder and harder each year. So for yeah. Harry, for example, um, yeah, he's investing m money now in his in his future career, and he sort of like steps aside from the F one dream early. Yeah, you know, to no, that's what he has. Because I'm, I would say, if I had fifty million bucks, I'd be giving it to him to put in F one. I don't know how I'd get that back. 
Oh, yeah. But, but he, he seems, it seems that the number that they talk about for F1 is that you need about 50 mil to bring a sponsor on board with 50 mil. Yeah, I uh, mean, that's the way it kind of works. Yeah, you need either uh, help from the family or um, from a big sponsor. Like, like your dad to own the team, that would help. Yeah. Yeah, or your dad to own Red Bull or Mercedes <laughs> or Williams or some kind of some. Yeah, you need to find the funds from somewhere. The car, someone has to pay for the the tires, the fuel, the track, the personnel. It's a very expensive sport, um, but it can be done. Lewis Hamilton come came from a family with nothing, the same as myself. Uh, we used to rake it out, race our local go kart track. My dad used to help him get his go kart off of the roof rack off of their cheap car that they had back in those days. Uh, his dad was smart. Um, and sold Lewis as a future world champion to Mercedes and McLaren. <clears throat> yeah, and within a few years' time, he was at the track with a 40-foot lorry there and uh, mechanics from McLaren setting up his go-kart. <laughs> so he was going places. So it can still be done, it, well, for it, sure. Do you think it done. can be done now like that? Yeah. Like with the, you know, you look at the kids of today. I, I look at the F1 guys, because yeah, let's face it, F1 got really fucking boring for a while there. And... I, you know, you can blame Schumacher because it was just so boring. I was winning, but you, uh, then you look at a the last, you know, couple of years ago, and then Netflix come out the Doco Drive to Survive, where my wife hates motorsport, but she freaking loved that series, okay. and she went, "Oh, that's why you do this," and I'm like, yeah. "Yeah, that gives you a little bit of a taste of how it really is." And you look at the young, the racing of the last seven rounds of F1 last year, 2019. Was probably yeah, it was the good. best it was racing I can remember seeing. Yeah. You know, I rate it on am I asleep or awake by the end of the race, <laughs> right? Because in Australia, we're always getting up at stupid times to watch it. True. And I'm a bit of a tragedy. I like watching almost every race. Yeah. There's a couple that are too far skewed. And you watch the driving and the drivers coming through, and they appear to be having the time of their fucking life. <laughs> like. Yeah. The Na- young Nando, yeah, yeah all those guys the nice. Nando the, and and Leclerc, like these guys are having yeah. a ball, and you know Ricardo definitely he is having a ball. You know, people said, "Oh, why'd you go to Renault?" I mean, it's pretty simple. He got paid a fucking lot of money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like like literally, I, I, for me, it was a pretty easy step because he was never going to be number one driver at F one. Yep. Because they're the golden child Verstappen, Verstappen yeah. and and he can drive. And, sure. and he, even Verstappen, I think, was a 17 mil contract as the number one driver. And Ricardo's out there for, I think, 50 mil for two years. I mean, it's yeah. a pretty easy decision. It, I, I mean... I think so, yeah. As a racing drive, you've only got a certain shelf life, right? So he'd had a few good years with Red Bull 1 races, pole positions, knew he wasn't going to be the number one choice in the team to go to Renault, which has been world champion in the past and has got, you know, it's with a big manufacturer, which has got potential for the future, yeah. It may, it's a no-brainer and okay they, they weren't race winners in the first year but there's a long-term plan there I think and eventually it'll do a full circle and they'll they'll be the new Mercedes in a few years time I think.